What's up Flips Nation, this is Travis here and today I want to give beginners some tips on how you can start collecting Pokemon cards. Now guys, this is purely my experience from about 5-6 months into this hobby and having learned so much from the community, just absorbing everything like a sponge. I want to share some tips on how you can actually start this journey in the best possible way because I know when I started out right, I, I basically didn't have these kind of videos and everything I did was just my own research on Google and just kind of like learning through the school of hard knocks just making mistakes, buying cards that I shouldn't have, buying fake cards so these are information that I would like to share with you guys that I would love to have known if I was starting in the beginning so I know that many of you guys just joined the hobby in the middle of this year some of you guys started from Chilling Rain some of you guys are just starting now or some of you guys watched my TikTok and came back into Pokemon cards whatever it is, I have broken down this video into several parts including the item items you need, the resources you need and kind of the mentality you need to go in with so that you enjoy and get the most out of this hobby. So first thing, let's start off with the resources that you need. Now first thing, you always need to have a fundamental level of information and resources going into this hobby. Otherwise, you're very susceptible to getting ripped off or, or buying fake cards like me. Everything will seem very confusing to you. This is a hobby packed with so many cards, so much information, so much opinions. End of the day, you need to be able to make a decision for yourself. So of course, starting out right, I would recommend everybody, if you have zero knowledge about Pokemon cards or trading cards in general, you want to do some ground research, you want to go into Google, you want to just find quick answers to questions such as what are Pokemon cards, what are the latest sets, how to invest in Pokemon cards, what sets to buy. You can watch videos like this on how to start collecting Pokemon cards. But basically, don't go in without any knowledge and just whack only. I know people who like to do this, but you need to have some fundamental knowledge. So there are three websites that I recommend you to bookmark. Number one, pokelector.com number two, pokebeach.com and number three, pokeguardian.com So the first one, Pokelector, this is this is basically like the dictionary for Pokemon cards. You can practically find every bit of information about all the Pokemon cards from the very beginning all the way to modern sets. And I love the way the website is structured, it's colorful, it's easy to navigate and I know that many people in the community use it as well. It is super useful and for example like myself, I use it on an almost daily basis to search for cards or to just look up my chase card or do my research or come up with new ideas. Now the next two right, Poke Beach and Poke Guardian, they are essentially the same. They give you the latest breaking news and leaks of Pokemon TCG. So if you want to keep yourself up to date with the latest information about the newer sets then you want to bookmark these two websites as well so now you have your base right you are ready to buy Pokemon cards you just go to your nearest shopping center you grab a couple of booster packs and when you open them and fingers crossed you get a good hit you can just take this card the card name and the card number and just reference on Poke Letter, and then you can find out information about this card or for example the upcoming Evolving Sky set is dropping so you can go to Poke Beach or Poke Garden to read out the latest news and information about this set now next Next, let's talk about the items that you need as a collector. The first and most important thing is when you have your cards, you need to make sure that they are well protected. So I actually did a video on the 10 items you need as a Pokemon cards collector. So make sure you check that out. But just to quickly touch on the two most important items you need, you need to grab hold of card sleeves and you need to grab hold of top loaders. Guys, these are essential. When you pull your cards straight out of the pack, they are vulnerable. You can just accidentally damage them, especially if you pull a few hundred dollars card so always have these two on standby all right guys next we're gonna talk about where to buy your pokemon cards this is by far the most common question i always get and straight up i'm just gonna give you my go-to answer which is just go to your nearest shopping mall local game store any game shop and see if they sell pokemon cards there so i rather if you're a beginner to this right just go down to your local stores and experience the whole thing of finding out what sets they are, what booster packs, what TCG products they are and just buying a few, just grabbing them off the shelf and paying and getting hold of the item there and then. This is part of the experience, this is part of the hobby as well. Now if you're overseas, you have to do some research but if you're in Singapore, there's actually a link, I think it's called SG Pokemon Portal or something where it basically gives you all the official licensed physical stores in Singapore and you can just search based on your location and I'm pretty sure that you find one that is reasonable 
reasonably near to you. Now, if you cannot find Pokemon cards in your physical store, then the next option is to order them online. It can even be in the secondary market like Carousel. But basically, there's so many options. There's so many sellers for Pokemon cards. If you're in Singapore, once again, you can just head over to Carousel. You type in Pokemon cards and I guarantee you, you'll find new results every minute. Now, if you want to talk about sealed products from licensed distributors, then the best bet is to go into Shopee. You can usually find a lot of reputable sellers there and that's where you can get your booster packs, booster boxes, ETBs. Shopee is more for these kind of sealed products compared to Carousel is you're more likely to find single cards and graded cards there. Another option is to join WhatsApp or Telegram groups. Usually some of these distributors, they have these groups and within these small circles, they actually drop the latest releases and usually they have the best prices as well. Now, one last thing I almost forgot, if you're in Singapore, there's the Pokemon Center in Singapore and they have an online store in Shopee. So that's where you're guaranteed to get licensed real Pokemon booster packs and products as well. Now, the next thing is Pokemon cards prices. People always ask me about Pokemon cards prices. How to find card prices, where to verify card prices. And the most common straightforward answer I always give to you guys, there are thousands of cards. What is the actual card that you're holding in your hand? Because that is 50% of the work done. That determines where we're gonna head to to look for the exact price of this card. Is it a graded card? Is it a vintage card? Is it a modern card? Is it English card? Is it Japanese card? Okay, for example, if you have a Japanese card and you tell me where to find card prices, I cannot tell you throw and tote or TCG play. You have to go to Card Rush Japan or UU Tang. But for English cards, which are the majority, the two biggest ones are throw and tote and TCG player. So these two, they basically give you a quick estimate of the market price. But take note, and I've mentioned this many times, that these are not fully accurate. You still need to go to check over at eBay or Carousel if you're in Singapore because over these secondary market places you'll be able to find the actual prices that these cards are being sold and to be honest what I sense from these kind of questions is to be straight out with you guys laziness because it's 2021 everything can be Google I can just go do a quick Google search where to find Pokemon cards and within seconds the results will come out so I guess people's concern is more of where to verify and make sure that card prices are accurate instead of where to find card prices. So once again, guys, if you are uncertain, just check around, go to the community, go to your Instagram, in your IG story, ask around the community. There's no one single person. Travis Phillips cannot tell you the exact price. Travis Phillips is not the expert. Travis Phillips is not the community. So to get a definitive, accurate answer, you need to get from multiple different sources. Or you can join my Flips Nation community group, Shameless Club, and then you can drop your questions there as well. Well, now next and if there is one piece of message I need to share with you guys in this video is do not compare this is a hobby not a competition I know sometimes when you see the community then there's so much hype then it, it kind of makes you feel that ah, oh, I gotta compete with others every day you see people posting hits posting their Zards or their vintage cards or their PSA 10 cards if you see this on a daily basis every minute every second sheesh my collection is nothing man man I gotta go get more Zards Man, I gotta go chase baby voltage until I pull that rainbow Pikachu. That is not how the hobby is supposed to work, guys. Let me tell you guys one thing. Nothing in social media, including this whole trading cards hobby, is real. You don't know the story behind how they acquired these cards, right? So don't compete with this. What if I tell you the person who has 100 Zars, 100 Pikachu, he or she is a millionaire, a billionaire, or they just won the lottery, or the cards may not even belong to them, or even better, they stole the images and just reposted it. My point is there's so many millions of images and posts about this that it really doesn't accurately reflect the average collector. I would say that majority of the collectors in our community, they don't have Zards, they don't have graded cards. All I can say is if you chase this game and you don't have the means to do it or the budget to do it, you're gonna end up burning yourself. It's really really miserable when I see that people have to compare these or leave statements like um, your, yours is better, your collection is better. I mean, for me, first and foremost, I always tell myself, I'm just gonna collect what I like. I'm not gonna give it to the pressure. Especially this year, they introduced these freaking alternate arts. And let me tell you guys, there's gonna be more alternate arts. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna keep chasing. One card is $600, you know. So some of you guys are students or kids, where are you gonna get the money from? So end of the day, there is really no point to compare. This is just a hobby to have fun, first and foremost. So make sure you're 
always enjoying. I'm not saying you cannot go and buy a $600 car. You can if it's within your means and it makes you happy. You must really love that car. Right, let me ask you, if you buy a few thousand dollars graded car, PSA 10, and after that you're miserable, you have to eat grass for a few days, it doesn't make you happy, then what's the point? I mean, on this point, I just want to touch on the special delivery Bidoof. You see eBay, people already putting it up for a few hundred dollars, 500, 600, I don't know. But to me, I'm gonna offend some of you guys again, but that car is such an ugly design. Personally, I do not feel anything for Bidoof. And to me, it's just another normal piece of cardboard. So I definitely won't be throwing $500 just to get that card just because everyone is hyping it up. So guys, you need to be solid in your preferences. You need to have that iron in knowing what you want and what makes you happy. Now, just very quickly, regarding buying single cards or opening packs until you get your chase card. I know starting out is super fun to open packs, to open booster boxes, ETBs, and you're so hyped for that Charizard. Very quickly, if you're gonna see my first video, Video, very quickly you realize that it's all a matter of luck more likely than not you're not gonna get that rainbow charizard after just two etbs it's more likely gonna be a case or two so if you're gonna pay for that case or two cases which is gonna cost you thousands of dollars versus just buying that rainbow charizard straight for 350 dollars which one is the more logical choice you tell me now second last point all right graded cards psa cgc bgs whatever let me be the first to tell you guys that graded cards don't matter it shouldn't be the end all be all in this hobby okay to be honest because i feel that ultimately if everyone's end goal is to go for graded cards psa 10 it's not going to be very healthy for this hobby first of all doing graded cards and being into graded cards and all that already represents a different level in this hobby already for me in this hobby it doesn't take much to enjoy you go to the shopping mall you open a few booster packs with your friends you check out your friends binders this is all bringing you happiness but when you want to play the game of graded cards you're talking about easily right now you gotta spend a couple of hundred dollars for grading fees not including shipping fees back and forth to United States or UK or wherever to get your cards graded back. If you want to play that whole game of investing, flipping cards or whatever, fair play to you. But if you are new to this and you are thinking like, wow, why, why everyone PSE 10 and all that, please. It doesn't and shouldn't represent a big part of this hobby. Now, once again, don't get me wrong. I love graded cards. I'm into this. I'm super into this. I have graded cards. I've sent cards for grading. I'm one of those super particular when I see cards on carousel. Please show me the front and back, the video, the whitening and all that. But my point is that if you want to play this game, you must be prepared. Your wallets must be prepared. So my question to you is, can you play this game or not? You see Poketubers or Instagrammers, right? They have slabs for days. They might have graded these cards 10 years back when, when grading fees were cheap. They may have bought their base set Charizard PSA 10 for a few hundred dollars 10 years ago. So there's no sense to compare, oh, this guy has so many graded vintage cards. Oh, I only have my raw raw binder cards. I would rather want to spend time with you who, who loves it for the cards itself than some graded card snob who is like, oh, no entry to my elite group if you don't have at least 100 PSA 10 slabs. We cannot talk. <laughs> So guys, don't get sucked into this series. I can tell you, you see my YouTube videos, right? When I do videos on grading and graded cards and investment and all this, they don't get as much views as videos that I go out hunting for Pokemon cards, doing challenges and having fun. And that tells me that this is what people want to see, having fun. You see Alistair Lee getting millions of views doing his flip it or burn it or whatever. You see real breaking Nate hunting for hidden Pokemon cards. All these big time names, they're having fun. Who's, who's talking about graded cards? And I can tell you when I go out and meet you guys in the community, our conversation is mostly about pulling cards or what's the latest chase cards or going out and open booster packs together. We are not gonna gather and talk about, oh, let's examine this card now, the PSA 10. No, it's PSA 9. No, it's PSA 10. Let's start arguing. So once again, Graded cards represent a different level in this hobby. It isn't the end of be all, it isn't the end point, the, the biggest goal of this hobby. The biggest goal of this hobby is loving what you collect. Which brings me to my final point. Join the community. If you're new to this, this is the biggest thing you can do for yourself. Join the community, join Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, whatever local Facebook group, WhatsApp group. To me, right, to me, the biggest enjoyment I get is participating in the community events, joining the community discussions, live box breaks, meeting you guys, talking about cards, checking out each other's collection, 
queuing for Pokemon cards. You see, for example, in Singapore, there's a new and thriving community. And most of them are awesome and super friendly and super passionate about this. And when you're involved, you see so many giveaways. People are so selfless in helping each other get products. You can join live box break. You can watch live stream. I love it, I love it. This is the best part of the of the whole hobby for me. Once again, shameless plug for my Flip Station community group. Join the Facebook group, it's a private group if you haven't already done so. And I cannot overemphasize how important it is to create an IG account and then start posting images, pictures, posts, videos of your cards, your collection. Instagram is where I built my community and where I started to make friends and where I actually connect on a personal level with other collectors. Okay, so the biggest advice I can give you is to create Instagram and start posting and sharing your love for Pokemon cards for this hobby with the world. The proudest thing for me is that my, my feed, go, go check out my feed, Instagram, Basically my body of work. I love my Instagram feed. I love how messy it is. I love how crazy it is. It's all about documentation of my journey as a Pokemon cards collector. Nobody can say that I'm just doing this for the money. You can't tell me that I don't love Pokemon cards. All right, Flip Station guys, once again, thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's, it's kind of a rant at times, but it is really my true emotions with regards to this hobby that I want to share with new collectors. If you are new to this, welcome to the hobby. Welcome to the community. It's amazing. Let's share our collections. And guys, leave in the comment section below. Don't be shy to drop your thoughts and just join the discussion. I know I covered a lot of points. Join the discussion. Let me know what you're thinking. And guys, I know there's an elephant in the room. Y'all just gotta stay tuned and watch. It's gonna be an epic week, guys. Bye. Break down, break down, break down.